Mm. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Here is the good news. We have exactly one more weekend without NFL players in training camp, or at least without, actually, technically, there's already going to be players in there without the Dallas Cowboys being there. This to me has been like, this is my analogy of how this summer has been. I feel like I am stranded in the Sahara Desert, that literally there's nothingness, only sand and heat. And from time to time, you look and you say, oh my God, is that a Dak Prescott contract? Is that a free agent signing? In the same way, I would imagine that you think that you see an oasis over there, that you see some trees and, and a nice little lake and some water, some relief out there. And you hurry up and you run over there to get there only to find out it was a mirage. The Dallas Cowboys offseason has been one big mirage. It doesn't exist. The Cowboys, eh, they've tinkered a little bit here, you know, bringing in Eric Kendrick and bringing back Zeke Elliott and so on. But for the most part, nothing's going on. Now, yesterday was an interesting day because the day before I decided, you know, there's not a whole lot going on. I'm going to try and see what it's like to go through a day without posting a lot of videos. And so I posted my morning video and then I did the fireside chat explaining what happened during the day. And I got so much flack about, you know, you do 12 videos a day and all this. That was no break and stuff. So I said, you know what? I'm going to actually try and do 12 videos in a day. And doing it during this whole Sierra Desert part is difficult. Now, maybe if it had been, you know, after training camp had started that, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Like I said, you could go through and we could be talking about Mike McCarthy and the hot seat and how Dak Prescott looked. Was there any interceptions in practice? You know, Zeke looking like the warrior and everything else, you know, have the Cowboys built another, you know, VIP thing and pissed off the neighbors. You know, there's always something, some angle that's going on with the Cowboys when they're actually there. But this offseason, there isn't even a hint of players that they might sign. There's, of course, no new contracts to sign, talk about, you know, where somebody got paid or, you know, Michael Gallup got a new contract and is he going to be ready for training? It, there's none of that. It has been just awful. And it was hell to try and go through and literally do 12 videos. Because when I decided to do that, it was already 11 o'clock. So that meant that I had to do 11 more videos in the next 12 hours, along with the live stream that lasted two hours. But we did it. And I will dare say that I actually did 13 because I posted one on my other channel because we were working on the outdoor. Uh, what, what are we calling that room, honey? Is it a sunroom? It's not a mud closet, mud room. It's not a butler pantry, an outdoor butler. Uh, okay. Huh? Okay. But I want to know what you want to call it. Okay. Sunroom. Okay. She's going to call it a sunroom, but it's got a sink and a kitchen cabinet in it. But whatever it is, we were working on that. So we posted a video of that over there. So we got that. And I know right now we got some of y'all that are pissed off because it's like, let's just get to my cowboy news. Listen, this is what you get with me, okay? I talk about all kinds of stuff. And really, there's nothing to talk about other than Dak Prescott got together all of the offensive skill positions and players and things for a retreat to get together. And there's no C.D. Lamb. Some people commented about how Trey Lance looks like he's built to be a linebacker right now. Um, which is interesting to hear people say that. Um, he definitely looks like he's been working out. Hopefully it'll help him to stay uh, uninjured and so on. We don't know of any movement on any contracts. Of course, we've got the speculation of, you know, C.D. Lamb is the first thing to get paid. We've got ones that say that nobody's going to get paid before November. We actually are left with nothingness other than of course the good old quarterback rankings and so on and rumors of players that want to come here 
So we have Justin Simmons that yesterday, and let me say shout out to Dak Attack, because Dak Attack, he's one of those young guns that's up and coming, who's doing in the work and everything else, and he was the first one that I saw that actually was posting about Justin Simmons wearing the Dallas Cowboy hat at his youth camp. Um, and then, of course, we saw others and things post about it. I posted about it. And this morning, even Mike Fisher's talking about it. Um, Mike Fisher's thing was, yeah, that's kind of cute and everything else. But the Cowboys, of course, as we know, have no money. And I have to agree with this because they don't take care of business when it comes to the salary cap and trying to make contracts that actually work. Um, that is to me the biggest failure of the Dallas Cowboys is they don't bring in people that really know how to do contracts and understand the salary cap because the Cowboys, after doing absolutely positively nothing this year, not even re-signing their own players to the new contracts, are still sitting at $12 million, 21st as far as cap room. So when you sit here, and you think about this. I want you to think about this for a second. New England with 43. The Commanders with 37. The Cardinals with 35. The Lions with 34. And understand the Lions, they've locked up their big players. Yeah, they, they've paid their players. The Raiders with 34, who might be interested in Dak Prescott. Although I've had some Raider people come back at me and say, don't, don't wish that on us. I'd say it's a lot better than Jimmy G. But then again, what do I know? San Francisco, which still has to sign Brandon Ayuk with 31. The Jags with 28 after paying Trevor Lawrence. The Green Bay Packers with 28. The Minnesota Vikings with 26. The Indianapolis Colts with 25. And the Eagles, after all of the moves that they've made in signing their players, still have $25.8 million. Literally more than twice what the Cowboys have. If I am a person that looks at my business or my budget and all that, and I see all these people with the same amount of stuff seemingly thriving, I have to look at what I'm doing and saying, what am I doing wrong? Where am I wasting money? How is it that these people have so much more than what I do? I am the richest franchise, the most valuable one in the world of any sport but somehow even when we hear that teams if they have to go ahead and come up with this appeal deposit or bond it's not deposit bond which will be about 430 million dollars i think the only team that said that i could actually afford to do it would be the dallas cowboys that that's more money than the operating costs for most teams. But somehow, somehow, the Cowboys only have $12 million of operating space. And because that's a mismanaging of money. And I'm trying to understand how somebody who literally only plays the most valuable franchise um, cheerleaders, only $500 a game, that literally is a mom and pop shop that hires all his own people, that somehow that they even charge for lunch to their players, that somehow they can't seem to manage the cap. It doesn't make any sense at all. How is it you keep screwing the pooch when it comes to the cap? I constantly see the New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Saints, 80 million in the red when the before the league year starts. But somehow... They've signed players, and they still have $12 million like we do. It doesn't make sense. So, as we roll on through here today, um, trust me, we are not doing 12. My, we are not. We are not doing 12 videos today. We're not. I, I just can't. I just can't. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, but it was hard work. I ain't going to lie. It was hard work. But as we round out today, we have another one of the quarterback rankings. And this is all of the quarterbacks ranked. Um, the top 10, I believe, uh, quarterbacks by NFL executives and coaches and front off and scouts ranking them. So let's listen in to what they have to say and where Dak Prescott falls according to them. Fowler's top 10. 
10 quarterback rankings. It was released just now over at ESPN.com. We'll go from 10 to 1. And I, I think the way to play this is we'll stop about halfway through. And you can tell me yeah. how you feel. And then we'll there kind of ass assess the rest of the list. Top because 10. there's some names on here that... I think you could probably, like, if you really were nitpicking, you could probably move up or down a spot. Mm -hmm. Nothing here that's super, you know, is a super big surprise. So coming in at 10, Dallas, quarter, Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott, who at this point still does not have a new contract. Jared mm -hmm. Goff, the Lions quarterback at number <laughs> nine. Aaron Rodgers at number eight. C.J. Stroud, the youngest quarterback on this list, coming in at number seven. Justin Herbert of the Los Angeles Chargers at number six, and then Matthew Stafford from the Los Angeles Rams at number five. As I give you the first five on this list from 10 to five, what are your initial reactions? I mean, if we're going to do the Jared Goff thing, where's Brock Purdy? I guess that's my thought. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? If we're going to do sort of the system guy who sort of uh, exceeded Ooh. expectations uh, but was efficient, I, I, I think Brock Purdy has to take that spot, it feels like. But, you know, I don't have a problem – uh, with the bottom five entirely. Uh, maybe a few names you have questions about, but Jared Goff is the one where I'm like, all right, if he's there, where's Brock Purdy? That was my only kind of uh, challenge, I think, with the bottom five. We call these lists, like when you make these, like we put them into quarterback tiers. So like there's like the tier one. So that's the elite guys. Frankly, I think that, you know, there's one quarterback that's in his own category. And then you could probably have the elite guys. But then there's, you know, tier two, three, and four with like two and three being people that you expect to be on on these top 10 lists these quarterbacks who are not necessarily scheme transcendent but the ones that you mm -hmm. can that are like that. usually on teams that are contending for deep playoff runs so i'll give you the the final four and i'll give you the honorable mentions as well so four i think falls into that elite category if mm -hmm. you want to use that word the upper echelon it's lamar jackson at number four josh allen mm -hmm. at number three Joe Burrow at number two, and of course, Patrick Mahomes at number one. So from one mm -hmm. to 10 again, I'll give it to you here. Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Matthew Stafford, Justin Herbert, CJ Stroud, Aaron Rodgers, Jared. I'm sorry, uh, 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 forgive me for interrupting there. I, I just can't put Justin Herbert there. Justin Herbert has really had one really good season. One really good season his second year with the 37 or 38 TDs. But after that time, he has gone downhill the last uh, two seasons. He just has. And so, to me, uh, are, are we looking at this collectively of him as a whole? Because it's not like he hasn't had some weapons and things with it. I'm just looking at it. that. That's one of the ones that kind of bother me. Um, I will say that Joe Burrow is an incredible talent, but I would have to say that you have to actually at this point start worrying about Joe Burrow's health because having been in the time that he's been in and having as much injuries as he's had, you have to worry about the longevity of him. Um, CJ had an incredible season last year. I'd like to say, let's see more. Aaron Rodgers, I'm not sure that Aaron Rodgers is still that guy. Um, coming back from the injury. But that's just me. So let, let's go on some more. Jared Goff, Dak Prescott. And here are the honorable mentions. So these are the guys who just missed because I'm, I'm sure many of you that are listening to us on ESPN Radio, over on ESPN2, maybe on the app this morning, are thinking, huh, I don't see the quarterback that was on a Super Bowl team two years ago on this list mm -hmm. in Jalen Hurts. I don't see... Jordan Love, a team that took down the Dallas Cowboys, that outside of one wild throw across his body, Brett Favre style, was almost on his way to the NFC Championship in Jordan Love. Well, Brock Purdy, who was in the Super Bowl last year for the San Francisco 49ers, hits the honorable mention list. Jordan Love, Jalen Hurts okay. on there as well. Tua Tagovailoa, Kirk Cousins, and then Trevor Lawrence. So I've got six names mm. there that you can sort through. And... Let's start with Purdy because there's we did this exercise on first take as well last week and ours mm -hmm. was who's the best NFC quarterback right now and then switching the question up getting a little bit more into the weeds there best the NFC quarterback you want to with the game on the line in the Super Bowl for all the marbles which NFC quarterback would you take and 
I, I had a hard time. I have always have a hard time leaving Brock Purdy off of these lists because mm-hmm. you're doing Can't something put everybody right on. that in its in and of itself is still independent of how good your play caller is. Of course, that marriage between Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy and having a loaded group of weapons, like that's an ideal situation. But if you are a bad quarterback, I mean, hell, if you're Jimmy Garoppolo, do you get as much out of the offense as Brock Purdy did? I just cannot make that assumption that it would be the same and whole, this whole system quarterback argument that you could put anybody in there and the results would be identical to what we've seen from the San Francisco 49ers in Purdy's second season. I can understand when you take a look at the 10 others that were put in front of him here and why he's an honorable mention, but Purdy in what he did in his second season, highest completion percentage of any San Francisco 49ers quarterback, not named Joe Montana, the efficiency, how well he was able to distribute the ball. And frankly, how much, you know, it wasn't a one year wonder with him coming in as Mr. Irrelevant in the 2022 season. He followed that up with a performance that got his team into the Super Bowl. I think there might be some people who look at maybe like eight, nine and 10 on this list and say you could actually put Brock Purdy in there. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Get Jared Goff out of there and put Brock Purdy. See, I can't, right? I, I, I can't think... go. I can't go with you on that one, Myron. I'll, I just Jared Goff in the fourth quarter and overtime last year was one of the most clutch quarterbacks in the NFL. He That's got fair. his team to one half, being one half away hmm. from the Super Bowl. Your thoughts? Granted, the quarterback on the other sideline was Jared was uh, Brock Purdy, but yeah. it's. I think a lot of those you can make the interchangeable argument that if you have this whole system notion that it can be one guy over the other, yeah. and you'd probably put Purdy on that list over Jared Goff. Yeah, I don't believe in the system quarterback thing because, you know, at the end of the day, like, you still got to make that system uh, reach its potential, right? So, I mm-hmm. mean, I don't think that's a fair conversation. The weird thing about this list to me, Courtney, is what is the criteria? That's not clear. Uh, the MVP from last year is fourth. A guy who didn't really play last season, Joe Burrow, is second. I get it because healthy Joe yep, Burrow is certainly head. number two, I think, behind Mahomes. A guy who played all of four plays, I believe, is eighth and Aaron Rodgers. So is, is Thank this, you. if everything is right, if everyone's healthy, that's the list? Uh, because there are a bunch of guys on that list, if it's just based on last year, who weren't even fully available. I think Brock Purdy has to be in your top ten. Mm-hmm. It's nothing against Jared Goff, but I think – they're in a similar category where people say the conditions have to be right in order for them to. So that's what I would say too, because I'm looking at that and saying it's kind of like the NFL top 100 list. A lot of times it, it's more about feeling and projecting than maybe what actually happened on the field. So you're looking at this and saying, if I'm saying these are the best quarterbacks right now, potentially, if all things are, if you're healthy. You, it, it's hard to argue with that. If you're saying by the performance of what happened last year, then it's not anywhere near right. And the reality is, is you're going to have quarterbacks that end up having a great season and all of a sudden they're going to move up. But in the totality of their career, you have to look at it and say, is this the exception or is this the rule? Because you could look at Deshaun Watson, his last year with the Texans, where he was – excuse me, phenomenal. He was phenomenal. And um, on a 4-12 and team, but then he was off for a year, and then the last two years, he looks awful. So are we judging him by that one great year, or are we looking at the totality and the direction and scale of where it's going? And that's neither here nor there, because in the end, you're going to have some people that had terrible seasons last year that are going to have great ones this year. And you have guys that had great seasons last year have a terrible one this year because that's the way it is. And at the end of the day, you have to look at a person's total work, the totality of it. And that's all I have to say about that. All right, good people. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And uh, we will be seeing you soon. And if there is anything that appears out here in the desert, we'll be sure to bring